So directly behind me is the Smithsonian's Arts and Industries building. It's probably the oldest building in the Smithsonian's collection. It was one of the first national museums here in the US. But unfortunately, in 2004, it had to close to the public due to structural concerns. But now, almost two decades later, the museum is opening it back up to the public and celebrating its 175th anniversary with an exhibit called Futures. Futures is a kind of wide-ranging exhibition. There'll be works of art, inventions, and fantastical sci-fi ideas presented, all in hopes of giving us a glimpse at artifacts of the future. Futures is the centerpiece of our 175th anniversary here at the Smithsonian. You know, I think it was a bold decision to celebrate our anniversary not by looking backwards, but by looking forwards. When people think about the Smithsonian, they often think about the past. But actually, we've been talking to people about the future and unveiling the ideas that were going to change the world for 175 years. In this rotunda right here, in November of 1969, there was a rock from the moon. There's this great black and white photograph of all these kids clustered around it with their mouths open, being able to literally look at the future. This exhibition is a really great way to help people understand the ways that the Smithsonian has always been an engine of the future even as it also helps people understand the past. So behind me is the Futures That Inspire Hall, and the Futures exhibition as a whole is organized around these themes. So the Futures That Inspire is all about storytelling and aspirational stuff. So you'll find pieces about storytelling in video games and stuff about the latest Marvel film Eternals, as well as the most aspirational of all sci-fi technologies, the flying car. You'll also find the futures that unite Hall, and the whole point of that is to foster a more inclusive future, be that between different races, cultures, and religions, but also those who are differently abled, and even computers. Yes, learning to get along with AI is a very big part of uniting. Inside that hall, you'll find a futuristic version of SimCity where you collaborate with an AI to build a sustainable future, as well as totems and memorials to those lost to racial violence. There's also the Futures That Work Hall, and that one is more of a practical approach to ways that we can improve our immediate environment through technology. Be that bricks that are made out of mushrooms, or sustainable beef that releases less methane into the world, or even a appliance that actually scrubs carbon from the air. And all of these various installations are framed by the context of the Hall of Futures Past, which is how you enter the Futures exhibit. Here you'll find examples of how past generations have both envisioned and shaped our future for better and worse, including devices that created Bakelite. Plastic is a wonderful thing, but also it has destroyed our planet. And at the center of the exhibition, serving as a hub between the halls, is Me Plus You, an installation by Su Chi Reddy. I was asked by curator Isolde Brillmeyer to uh, submit an idea and I was thinking about how humans interact with technology and how that could be looked at through the lens of emotion. You walk up, you wait for it to turn green, so you'll know she recognizes you and, you're, and it's listening to you, and then you speak a word for your future into it. And then you get back an image of that word, and then you see your colors go into the central element, which puts all of our visions of the future together. The installation works by taking um, a voice input, essentially, and reading it using AI and ML with both to the content of the word and the emotion and the pitch with which the word is delivered. And those things are transcribed using programs like Transcribe and SageMaker, um, which are AWS's programs. And that information, that data, is fed back to the uh, cluster of LEDs that you see that I call the mandala. And over that, I overlay visual code. So it takes the information, it turns it into a particular um, light show that's uniquely yours, based on what you said and how you said it. The point being that you get back what you put out into the world. If there is to be hope for our future, then we need to be and act hopefully which is kind of the whole idea behind Futures. Of course, whether that comes off as infectious idealism or hopeless naivety will depend on the individual. Talking about the future with hopefulness without being naive is really the trick, but it's really important. 
we already have so much help imagining what could go wrong in the future. All you need to do is turn on the TV, look at your news feed, but we don't have nearly as much help imagining what can go right. And that's equally important. I think what we're trying to do is with this exhibition is say, look at the universe of possible ideas and solutions that could make things better. Which of these resonate with you? Which, which of these belong in the future you want to live in? And so we're really just trying to uh, help our visitors think through the trade-offs and the questions that come up when you're trying to decide what future are you moving towards. The concept of the whole show being about maybe envisioning a, a non-dystopian future, not necessarily utopian, but perhaps non-dystopian, was very attractive to me. I think that the creative act is essentially an optimistic one. When you set out to make something, you're not making it for a world that's not going to exist anymore. By doing it, you're doing something that's going to exist in a world. So it follows that you want that world to be the good one. The core concept that I really want to get across to people is that we need to be self-aware with how we engage with technology. So when you ask somebody, give me a word for your future, they stop to think because it's one word. And that essentially is the piece for me. I want people to really be conscious about how and what they are saying and how they're engaging both with the world and with everyone around them and really try to enhance the fact that we have agency and we have responsibility in how we see our futures and what we put out there to make together. Of course, you and I as individuals don't bear sole responsibility for shaping our future. It's hard not to feel hopeful walking the halls of futures though, seeing all the ways that technology can lead to a cleaner, smarter, and more inclusive society. Plus, there's just something undeniably appealing about unfettered idealism. But once you step out of the Smithsonian, it's hard to ignore the reality that a better world requires companies like Amazon, Google, and ExxonMobil to be engaged as forces for positive change as well. As long as they continue to build the technology that fuels climate change and powers the surveillance state, optimism will be a scarce resource. Our future isn't suddenly going to be brighter simply because we put out some good vibes. The Futures is open to the public now at the Smithsonian's Art and Industry Building and will be running until July 6th of 2022.